All right, so hopefully you made it through uh, part one of this little mini series, kind of updating you guys on the farm. Um, this will be part two. And what we're gonna look at now is my latest syntropic style planting. Um, this is something that I was gonna do last year and I didn't get a chance to, so I finally, finally got it in. Um, there's a few pretty main elements that I'm excited about and I'll kind of show you the pattern and talk about the intent. So hang on, let me turn the camera around. All right, so this is like the corner of my mango grove. And it may not look like a mango grove to you because I've got so much other stuff planted. And I got cassava, that's a mango tree. Um, they're in there, trust me, there's 60s of them. But anyway, what I wanna show you right now is this new planting that I just got in. Um, this is basically my property line. So my property line kind of goes down here. I've got my existing tree line and I'm actually extending that line all the way across, all the way down my property. And I'm leaving room on this side so that I can still mow this side and shoot the grass into my bed. The neighbor's getting ready to put a fence in. So I wanted to make sure I had enough room for access. And if you know me, you've, you've heard me talk about access way too much. So I won't, won't harp on it too much for now. But um, so this bed here, the intent here is to create something that looks nice because my neighbors are going to have to look at it. So that's what, that's what the coconuts come into play. It's also supposed to be somewhat protective. So these, these being dwarf coconuts, they're going to they're gonna hold this bottom space for a while. And then I've got these other trees here, which I'll mention in just a second, that are going to grow up higher and take the high spot. And they're going to cycle. There's going to be some, some circulation of different things that go through here. But... Um, that's the intent and then as far as the implementation what i decided to do here was to use species that i'm pretty sure are going to do fine with getting a little bit wet so this piece of this piece of my property is a little bit higher than right here this is like a little bit of a valley here and so when it does rain heavily the water does shed a little bit there is a potential that it'll get quite wet so i'm using species that i'm aware of being rather flood tolerant or that I'm testing <laughs> so I'm always testing something you'll, you'll notice when I do this kind of stuff so the coconuts that, that are here if you've watched some of my previous videos these coconuts are the dwarf Fijis they came out of my pina colada garden so I actually dug them up or me and a couple couple of helpers we dug all these up and relocated them that's where they're all tied up um, and that's why they're all staked down because they have a heavy canopy and they have basically no roots at this time, they need to be held up. Otherwise, you know, every little every little storm that comes through will knock them over. So that's what we did there. I have this one gap here. My neighbor, we're gonna put a fence between my property and the neighbor's property, so we have a gate here. So we left a gap, and then the thing keeps going. Um, that's the pina colada garden. So now it's just it's just the pina garden. There's no colada over there. I can show that another time. But what we did here, the, uh, the coconuts are spaced at 15 feet. And these are dwarf Fiji coconuts. And they're considered a dwarf because they will produce coconuts at an early stage in their life. So what that means is a lot of coconuts, they have to grow to a certain amount of trunk before they'll set the fruit up here. Not dwarf Fiji. Dwarf Fiji, as soon as it has even the hint of a trunk, can start fruiting. And it can start fruiting basically right at the ground. Um, now the canopy of a dwarf Fiji is still a full-size canopy. This head is a full-size head of a coconut. It's not like it's a smaller one. It's not a shrunk down version in that way. It just means it's dwarf, meaning that it fruits early and it also has short internodes. So what that means is, and I don't have a trunk to show you, but if you look at these, these leaves, every one of these leaves will create a scar on the, uh, the trunk will have a scar from where, where every leaf base was. And the distance between those leaf bases or those scars is called what I call the internode. And there's probably another better term for, for palms, but the idea being um, these dwarfs or this particular type of dwarf coconut has short internodes. So there's a short spacing, meaning the trunk doesn't grow that long that fast, which is great because that, that means I have harvestable coconuts for a long period of time. They start early and they take a long time to get out of my reach. And it's kind of cool for me as a windbreak or privacy 
screening because if you can imagine this is a big canopy coconut like that here's one like that so I'm gonna have a nice infill pretty soon so basically these are gonna get untied you see they're tied up like this these are gonna get untied probably at the end of the summer and then after hurricane season maybe I'll take these these strings off or whatever but that's gonna fill in pretty quick now what I did in addition to that because this isn't just a this isn't a coconut um, wall this is actually a centropic style planting so what I have is in between my coconuts I have a fruit tree in this case I was able to get a bunch of uh, seedling jackfruit from a friend of mine um, they were inexpensive and he had them and I didn't have anything else I really wanted to put in here jackfruit for me I have I'm having great success with my my jackfruit trees here's I'll show you over here really healthy happy you know pretty much these trees are killing it um, but I have my jackfruit trees on mounds and I've been told that they don't like wet feet well I'm willing to go out on a limb and try them out I put these at pretty much right at base level to see I figure I got a bunch of seedlings it didn't cost me that much let's try it out if it doesn't work out I'll put something else in here but that's what I'm doing I'm trialing out the jackfruit in between so here's the pattern coconut coconut jackfruit goes straight up nice thing about jackfruit is that most of the fruits around the base of the trunk and some of it's on the the main branches which means that my fruit isn't going to be hanging over my neighbor's fence where I can't get it so that's that's one of the attributes of the jackfruit that I liked and looked for for this particular purpose so those are going to fruit and be tall I'm going to actually let these jackfruit get pretty tall versus the ones I have here that I've been pruning down short and to try to keep them bushy these ones I wanted to be tall because jackfruit believe it or not makes a good timber obviously it makes a great fruit and I'm going to let it take on this higher level while the coconuts are taking on this medium level um, in between the jackfruit and the coconut I have this other tree which you can probably see and they're spaced what would that be every seven and a half feet so like two and a half meters something like that um, and those are my eucalyptus my Torellianas um, and you can see they're starting to push some new growth when I planted these I went ahead and removed all the lower branches I'm trying to train these into a single leader and these are going to be racing so these eucalyptus are going to race the jackfruit they're going to go up and they're going to be skirted up and they're going to be topped and all that's going to be fed back to this jackfruit and these these coconuts so they're here's a surface plant they're going to come up and make my windbreak in the first couple years jackfruit's going to take a little bit longer to catch up and he's going to get all the benefit of these guys being here protectively and then um, the biomass that's produced so that's kind of the main pattern so that's the main pattern there's like I think there's 20 coconuts 20 jackfruit twice as many um, eucalyptus in this bed and then we went ahead and seeded in um, we seeded in pigeon pea we've got some okra um, pigeon pea again okra that's gonna fill in kind of that bottom layer the pigeon pea what I'm gonna do is is tip them when they get to a certain size and to keep them kind of bushy and low so those are gonna be like my medium um, medium strata and then what I did which I kind of explained in my last video let me let me walk down this way I can show you a little bit better what I've done here on the sides is planted in some service plants right on the edge and the idea behind these service plants is that I'm building up fast recuttable biomass that I can place into my beds um, this particular part of the bed hasn't come up yet but we're gonna get to the piece where where it's already popping up first because I planted that a few days earlier or actually like a week earlier um, if you'll see this right here is the clumping grass this is that red napier grass and I'm experimenting with this as biomass production and this is a pretty intense plant so it's not something I recommend for everybody to play around with because if you let it get out of control it's really easy to propagate and that can be a problem you lay down a cutting and all of a sudden you got another thing and you got another thing and it gets all over the place what I've been told is when this plant gets about a meter high so maybe waist high it should be cut every time meter high cut meter high cut and and fed that into the 
into the tree line. And so this being outside of my main, you know, productive mango banana system, this is more of a long-term planting. I feel comfortable trialing out over here. And so I planted it like kind of every other, I think between every, between every plant in the midline, there's one of these boop, 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 the little cuttings that are down there. Like I said, I'm going to cut them and place them. Um, I haven't put anything on the backside yet. I'm still debating about that. But that's the, um, the essence of this Centropic system. You can see that I use a little bit of wood mulch, wood chips. Underneath the wood chips, let's, I'll show you real quick. I use this stuff, that locally they call it planting mix. This is basically um, an old pile of wood chips, a composted pile that they, they hot compost it for like 12 months or so. So it's available to me locally. I can go buy it by the yard, um, put it in my trailer, come over here, pitch it over. I like to top dress new plantings. Um, and then the key is you have to cover that top dressing with wood mulch because this stuff, as you can see, is dark, dark black. It gets really hot in the sun. If you just cover it, it stays nice and moist and cool and it benefits everybody. You get all kinds of good microbial activity. Um, there's that pigeon pea okra coming up. I, I'm gonna put more down the middle. I haven't got around to it. I'm kind of putting this together as I go. But um, that's the concept there. Hopefully I explained it pretty well. If it made sense, give me a like. If it made no sense at all, give me a thumbs down. If you got any questions about it, let me know. Um, this is part two of this little mini series catch up. And um, I'm thinking the next series will probably be mangoes. So stay tuned for that. I'll see you next time.